Hello, what do you guys know about fuel injection on a two-stroke? Well, we're gonna try to answer some of that in this video. This is a 2023 KTM 125. I've also got a 2023 Husqvarna 125, and if you didn't know, we recently dynoed a 2023, 2022 gas gas carbureted version of this motorcycle. And if you check our channel, we've also got the 2223 YZ125. So if you want to know what kind of power and comparisons they are, we've downloaded all of them. You can check that out. And we'll show you that in this video. First off, how much power does this bike make bone stock? Number two, is that better than the previous model? Number three, what is up with fuel injection? Is it good? Is it bad? We'll talk a little bit about that, but you're going to want to check back for an in-depth video in the future about fuel injection in two strokes. Here we go, 2023 KTM 125 on the dyno. That is a three runs back to back to back. And if you notice, when the pipe is cold, we get this green result. It has a little more bottom, signs off, doesn't make it as much peak and signs off earlier. As that pipe temperature heats up, we trade a little bit of bottom for a little bit of more over rev. The last run here, the third is in yellow, and then the middle run is in red. Now look at the peak horsepower, 3287. I'll be honest with you, that's not very good at all. That's kind of what we've seen on the new 23YZ125. Let me see if I can find one of those. Let's go pull one of those up. And this is one that's been in our channel before. So let's pull a couple tests away. I'm gonna get rid of the colder test and just do the third run. Here we go. YZ125 in red, 23 KTM in green. Way more bottom, less peak. What's up? The magazines all say that this bike is stronger than the KTM, or excuse me, that the KTM is stronger than the YZ. Well, that's kind of the case, because let's show you something. Let me add the Husqvarna that we tested. We'll show that in video here as well. We'll throw that in here for you guys. It's a 23 Husqvarna 125. And as you can see, it's a little bit off on the front, because it's probably a slightly hotter pipe pole. A little bit worse in the mid, but then it matches, and then it peaks a little bit higher. So this Husqvarna is peaking over here at 34.50. The best run we got out of the bike was 35 horse, the absolute best. Here's the YZ. You can't see it because it's in yellow, but it's peaking at about 33. And then here's this 23 KTM 125. Got a great front side, but it's not peaking very good. We're going to dig deeper into this in this video as we touch about EFI, but that's what this bike right here makes and let's go over some things about this efi system what do you guys really know about it i bet you don't know as much as you think you know number one is efi a godsend for two strokes hell no it's probably the worst thing that's ever happened to him and we'll get into that and i'll tell you why i think efi is stupid and we're gonna have a whole video on that this is new electronic power valve this actuates the power valve up and down on a servo motor that's controlled by the ecu here's your throttle body that's the manifold air uh, excuse me that's a tps sensor back in there down at the bottom there's two fuel injectors uh, we can get into why they use two down the road. 
Here is a crankcase pressure sensor. This is like a barometric pressure sensor, but it's a crankcase pressure sensor. And if you go look at this throttle body really close at the top, you're gonna notice there's no manifold air pressure sensor up there. And at the bottom, there's no manifold air pressure sensor at the bottom anywhere as well. What does that yellow knob do? Well, that yellow knob is just a cold idle knob. It actually does hardly anything. The only time that yellow knob works is when you push it in and it opens up your throttle plate a little bit. What does the red knob do? Well, it opens up your throttle plate and as a byproduct of that, it influences the TPS setting because as you open it, uh, it changes your TPS setting. Let's continue on. Look at this exhaust system. Do you guys see a sensor anywhere on this exhaust pipe? I've read on the internet that some people are talking about closed loop, self-tuning, it uses exhaust. There's no exhaust sensor anywhere on this bike, and that's a problem. We'll talk on that too. Nowhere on this silencer, nowhere within, no wires coming in or out of it. This has no sensors on it. What about that? What's that? Well, that's your coolant line. And then if you notice on the other side, we'll go back over, that's a coolant temperature sensor. That's a super important sensor. What about air temperature? What are they doing for that? Well, that's going to be somewhere in the air box. Let's pull that off. I've already pulled the air filter off for you guys. Let's take a quick look, see if I can even do this. Hold on, the power of movie yeah, editing. Voila. So no air filter. So if you notice inside the air boot, unlike the four strokes, there's no air temperature sensor. None, zero, zilch, zilch. So they're not measuring air temperature in the inlet track the way that they do on the four stroke. Let's show you that, hold I've on. I've snaked on over here to the 23 250F. Look deep inside that air box. See that little white thing right there? That is your engine intake air temperature sensor. Now, see where it's located? It's in the air box, but it's not exactly in the inlet tract. KTM's doing this for some reason, meaning they're trying to get a more accurate idea of ambient air temperature farther away from the inlet tract, not influenced by fuel and wave chilling, because they used to have it in the tract, and that has been a big change. Let's go over to this two-stroke. And voila, same exact location. They've got their engine air intake temperature sensor over there. So they're measuring the inlet temperature over there. Again, they're not putting it in the inlet track because they probably don't want it to be influenced by what the fuel is doing to the air inside of there, which is an interesting choice um, because the fuel does have an influence on that. In different fuels have different influences on your engine inlet air temperature. Older models had had this sensor either here sticking out or even in the track on the previous KTM 250. So that's certainly a new interesting choice that they've made. Another day, let's finish this video up. I'd like to get this finished up so we can move on and do some more work and show you more stuff coming for this bike. So I said early on, EFI for your two-stroke is dumb, and it is dumb. But let's tell you why that is. Number one, it's dumb because it doesn't have any way to measure a closed loop correction. It's not like your car. It doesn't have any sensors in the exhaust telling it what happened. It just knows what it measured with the crankcase pressure sensor, the air temperature sensor, and throttle position and RPM. That's it. So it's dumb in the sense that it's not always self-fixing itself or self-correcting. We read that in the internet, that's completely false. Number two, well, how come sometimes I've started up and it runs differently? Well, the bike does have a form of altitude correction using the crankcase pressure sensor. I've looked all over, I personally didn't find a barrow sensor on this bike, but it could have one, I just maybe can't find it. However, historically, KTMs and all the manufacturers have not had external barometric pressure sensors. This makes them bad at correcting for altitude on the fly. But every time you fire your bike up, they use strategies for that. And so that means that if you stop and start and stop and start your bike a few times when you change elevations, it's gonna reset its barrow set setting a little bit. So that might be what people are experiencing when they start and stop the bike a few times. This is a kid ECU. It has a barrel sensor built into it. One of the cool key features that only get ECUs have because it can live read that sensor while you go up or down a mountain or while the air pressure changes outside, which does happen different on weather fronts. And then it corrects live as you ride. It's able to correct for altitude as you ride. This one doesn't. Couldn't find a sensor anywhere on the bike except for the crankcase pressure sensor. This bike does not have a map sensor. All the four strokes do. So let's talk about how the system works. Well, the system's really dumb. And basically it's a lookup table. And that lookup table is saying, hey, at this throttle position and this RPM, we think this is how much fuel that you need based upon all our testing and R&D. We're gonna correct that a little bit with an air temperature sensor. So if the air is hotter, then we supply less fuel. And if the air is colder, we supply more fuel. Every EFI motorcycle has this now. And then we're gonna use the crankcase pressure sensor to try to determine how much air is in that crankcase each time. And then we're gonna to try to feedback that into the computer a little bit to make nudges on the tune-up. 
So by using the crankcase pressure sensor, depending on how much charge that is measured in there, we can nudge our tune up one way or the other way to try to make it a little bit more accurate. But there's no map sensor. All the four strokes have map sensors. The four strokes are a little bit better in the smart de department because of that, but they're a totally different system and two strokes are hyper complicated. You're gonna have to check back for our whole video on in depth on EFI on two strokes because it's really complicated. But to give you guys a little bit of an understanding, this bike, because of the fact it's a two stroke and has an expansion chamber pipe, means that every single time you're at 30% throttle in say 6,000 RPM, it doesn't mean you get the same amount of fuel that you need every time. Because the way that pipe works, it gets hotter, it gets colder, it has a good cycle, it has a bad cycle. The waves are not always the exact same. It depends how much airflow is going over your pipe. Did you hit a water crossing? Is it really hot outside? Is the sun beating down on the pipe? It determines the speed of sound in your pipe. And that speed of sound determines how the waves work. And those waves determine how much air goes in and out of your engine. So the amount of air going in and out of your engine is never a constant, even if you're at a constant throttle position and a constant RPM. That is what makes two strokes so challenging. Hasn't been solved by a host of really smart people. Honda worked on it really hard for MotoGP. Could have figured it out better than a carburetor. So have a bunch of other manufacturers that work really hard on it. Some of the smartest and brightest, best people in the world. Can it run? Of course it runs. You guys have seen it run. But does it run better than a car? Well, go ask everybody who's riding these right now. They'll tell you they don't like it that much. Why can't you decide to go this route? I don't know. It's heavier more parts, more costly, and clearly worse. And we didn't overlay the gas gas chart. I'm gonna do that here. The gas gas dominates this bike on the dyno, at least at peak horsepower. And that's true of the old KTM 125 and the old Husky 125 that have the carburetor. So to me, this is dumb. Everything about this is dumb. KTM should not have gone to EFI. It's not better for you guys, the consumer. It's gonna take a long time to get really, really good. And I say a long time, it's gonna take a couple of years for the manufacturers to really get this sorted out. And I don't know if it'll ever be better than a carb. Why? Because it never was done better than a carb in the past. And there's been a lot of smart people who have worked on this. We're gonna work our asses off on it. We've been working really hard already. We've got it better. We can make the bikes very, very good. Competitive, competitive with the old carb bikes. A very good bike, but it adds weight, it adds complexity, and it's not better. It's not like you guys thought it would be. So am I happy about this? Well, I think our shop has an advantage. We understand these things pretty well. I think you buy a bike from us that's been done, it rips. But at the same time, I wish that we just had a carburetor. It's a simple bike, it's a two-stroke. We should keep things simple and allow the consumer to have a cheaper, lower cost, easy to maintain, easy to keep up with bike. It's my opinion. I'll see you guys next time at HP Race Development. You guys have a good one.